Hi to everyone. Can't believe it. We are on week 10. We are at the end of this huge and incredible journey that we've been on. And this journey began, didn't it, back in Egypt when the people were slaves. They were led out through that Red Sea. God led them with his fiery pillar out into the wilderness. And there amazing things happened where bitter waters turned sweet and God provided angels food, manna from heaven for them. He gave them water out of a rock. And finally they reach Mount Sinai, don't they? And Moses goes up into that great mountain and there thunder and lightning can be heard as God comes down and he gives Moses those 10 commandments. And he also explains to Moses at that time that he wants them to make him, he wants the people to make him a sacred tent, a special place. I want to come and live among the people, God said to Moses. And he was going to dwell and live in that sacred tent in that beyond that holy place. Uh, where that golden box was with those angels, there God would come down and meet with Moses and his sacred special tent was put in the middle of the camp. And all the way on this long, long journey, those people just kept complaining. They're very like us. and They complained about all sorts of different things. And towards the end of that journey, the Bible says they became discouraged, depressed, fed up impatient even and then they really began to complain uh, they said they loathed the beautiful angels food that God was giving them they spoke against God and against Moses and God sent a plague of a snakes into the camp didn't he and many of them were sick and died and he showed Moses to make that snake wrapped around that pole um, and then the people would look up and they would be healed and they were made well and then the people journeyed on and incredibly, God had said to Moses, you're not coming into this promised land. He was angry with Moses because he had struck this rock instead of speaking to it. And he hadn't magnified God in front of the people. And, and Moses pleaded with him and said, I really want to see this land. I really want to go into the land. And God said, no, don't speak to me about this anymore. But I will take you to a high mountain and I will open your eyes and you will look out. And the Bible says that Moses, even though he was 120 years old, his eyesight was still perfect. And this is the view, possibly the view that he saw from this high mountain, looking out north towards the land of Israel. Maybe God even took him on some amazing journey, we don't know, but we know Moses saw the land and then he dies up on that mountain and incredibly the Bible teaches us that God buried him there and God raised up for them a new leader, his name was Joshua, he had been in that sacred tent with Moses, he had been close to Moses on that mountain and he was the man who was going to take the people into the promised land and I've got a map here now, you see that red arrow that's where, it's not an aeroplane, it's an actual normal red arrow, and it's right marking the place where the children of Israel had got to. They're right on the edge of going into that promised land. They'd lost Moses, but they'd got Joshua, and all the older generation of those unbelieving people who had sent in those spies and believed the report of the bad spies, they had died. And now this land that God had promised to Abraham 600 years before was about to become theirs. But, as so often in this story, there was a problem. In front of them was a huge torrent of water. It was called the River Jordan. This was the river that we heard about in the psalm. Now, nowadays this river isn't a fast flowing river because so much of the water has been siphoned off but then it was a big fast flowing water and it was in a time of flood so there were great torrents of water flowing down from the high mountains it was absolutely impassable and there were no bridges no boats could go across it was impossible to get across this but God told Joshua exactly what to do so Joshua gathered the people around him and he told them the priests are going to lift up the golden box the ark of the covenant and they're going to slowly walk into the water and God will stop the water and they're going to go in ahead and then the people are going to be able to walk across and so they take that golden 
box and they move down into the water and then incredibly just like in our psalm the river jordan the jordan river stopped flowing do you remember the question from the psalm and you O jordan why did you stop flowing look at this fantastic picture of joshua leading them across it they it was dry ground why did the river stop flowing because god had come down the bible says that the water stood up like a heap it was as though god created a sort of dam that was invisible and the water backed up and it flooded out across that plain right out for 20 miles to the north it was a huge vast amount of water this was a torrent of water that had been stopped and the bible tells us that the people hurried they rushed across perhaps because they were alarmed and worried and thought um, this water's going to come back down on us so they 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 raced across that 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 river and out the other side and then some of the strong men to lift up rocks large rocks and pick them up he said pick them up from the place where right where the priests are standing right where God is in the midst of this river and we're going to build a special memorial and we we're going to remember this day and then the Bible tells us that the kings in that area to the west and to the north were afraid they heard what had happened that God had stopped a river flowing and let the people into the land and they were afraid and then the people camp on this vast plain this plain of Moab in a place called Gilgal and there they rededicate their lives to God and then four days after they've crossed the Jordan at twilight just as the sun is setting the people gathered in their families and they did something very special they cooked and they ate that Passover meal they took a lamb and they killed it and they roasted it and they ate the same meal that they'd first eaten the night before they left Egypt and they remembered what their fathers had told them of that night but they were also without knowing it proclaiming the coming of another lamb the lamb of God who would come from heaven hundreds of years later in the very same promised land that they were about to enter so can you imagine what it was like for them that night I've got a fantastic picture here of them sitting outside their tents in their groups roasting their lambs ahead of them is the promised land behind them is the wilderness and with them among them is the living God and the fiery flames of of his presence would have been seen burning above the sacred tent that night at twilight as they ate that meal twice in this story that we've told there have been Passover lambs that night in Egypt and now 40 years later in the plains of Moab all of this is just a picture of Christ our Passover lamb and I feel we need to pray show me more about this lamb I'm praying show me more about this lamb give me a new sight of Calvary we may think well we know about all this but actually probably in our hearts we don't know very much the Bible says we just know little bits in the Welsh revival when over a hundred thousand people in Wales turned to God they said that Calvary which is actually just a small hill outside Jerusalem became in the people's minds and in their thinking like the Himalayas like a vast mountain range it became so big in their thoughts and their hearts in India at a similar time when the missionaries were asked what happened to you when this great time of revival came they said it was though God pulled back a veil the veil that separates heaven and earth and they said we saw Calvary these were devoted Christian missionaries they 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 knew about God they knew about Jesus and his death on the cross but they had a new sight of Calvary and it became like a living burning thing in their hearts and when the medical missionaries saw the Holy Spirit poured out in East Africa in the 1930s, they too said we had a second sight of Calvary. They said that becoming a Christian was like passing through the Red Sea, but that when the Holy Spirit came in greater power, they found a new love for Jesus and for his cross in their hearts. And to them, they said it was like crossing the Jordan. It was the beginning of entering the promised land. And so this is where we're going to leave these people, sitting around their fires. Here's the picture again, in their family groups, the children, the teenagers, the parents, the older ones, all together about to embark on the most extraordinary part of their lives, going into the promised land. Here they are, the children of Israel, the people of God, from whom will come a precious Messiah, the very Lamb of God. He was going to be born in this promised land. What a story. We're just going to pray. Lord, we thank you for this extraordinary story. We thank you that it speaks of Jesus. Father, we say to you today, we want to know more of Jesus. We want to know more about Calvary. 
Uh, we want to have a deeper understanding of this. We pray and ask you in your name. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our final three quick quiz questions. How many years did these children of Israel travel in the wilderness? Second question, what was the name of the great mountain that they came to where God came down? And third question, what was the name of the special meal they ate the night before they left Egypt and again on the plains of Moab? And here's the answers. They travelled for 40 years in that wilderness. The mountain was called Mount Sinai and the name of the special meal was the Passover. Again, I hope you got those all right. <laughs>